Awesome. Hey, Matt, um, getting down double digits is a burden, as you know, for a lot of teams, but it hasn't seemed to be the problem in this one. Yeah. I mean, you guys can come back from double-digit deficits twice already to win this year. Why? What, what is it about this team? Yeah, it's a great question. Well, number one, we don't want to make that a habit. Uh, but number two, I think what it does is you always talk about building identities um, schematically and trying to learn who you are. But then as a team, too, gelling together and going, being, becoming resilient, which this team has done over the years, uh, which I think is very, very impressive. But to be able to now use that with new players that you have on the team and show that you can win those type of games is going to be so huge for us down the road as we try to get to where we want to get to. Um, for me, what I think is really neat to see is the fact of a bunch of guys that don't panic, um, look for solutions, stick together. Not one single person points a finger. Uh, everybody's just trying to help each other out. And again, like for me specifically, being there with Patrick and the rest of the quarterbacks, it's, it's really um, special to be able to see how he gets going when things aren't going really well. It, it's, it's like he creates an edge. He, he, he creates a motivation within himself to not just be a leader, but then to go out and do it on the field. And you feel that, and that's what he's been doing. Can you give us an example of maybe what you're talking about, what he maybe did the other night? Well, I think we all saw and we felt it where you, you could kind of feel that one drive before our first touchdown drive. We got the ball going a little bit. We were getting some positive yards, and there was a little fire going. You could, you could sense it from the crowd. You could sense it from the players. You could sense it from the coaches on the, on the sideline. Um, but then it gets a little chippy, too. And, and sometimes um, that's, that happens in a lot of games, but sometimes when you're down a little bit, you might make that chippiness feel a little bit more than what it is. And I'm not saying that he did that, but that can be a part of how you do create that edge and you get going. And I do know on the sideline he had some fire going, and, and it's a good fire. And that, for me, is where um, you can it's infectious. You feel it, and it doesn't just happen and in, in, um, permeate to the – players too but to the coaches and it gets all of us going so there's just a different dynamic in those situations when, yeah when Pat, because of what Pat brings yeah because what he does on the field you know it's you can talk about it but then do you do it or what do you do about it you know and we've been seeing for since the day he's taken his first snap here in, in Kansas City what he can do he makes special plays and um, now he'll be the first to tell you he needs his guys around him to make that happen and he does but at the same point in time, um, when you have somebody that's that, that, that is that positive, that believes at any point in time um, we can score points whenever, however, whoever, that's what he believes in. And it's infectious and it's contagious. You, you know, we got down early fast. The good thing is, is that we had time. We had the rest of the game to get that back, and that's what we did. Matt, it, I know it's, it, it, remind me if this is correct, but you have one game. 17 where you saw Pat yeah. during the course of a game. Yeah. Now you have five. Obviously, this is in five years past that. But just what's it been like for you to watch him kind of, I guess, communicate to you guys what he's seen and being part of the solution and, and mid-game adjustments? Right. Um, well, that being his first game in 17 as a, as a rookie, you got to see the on-the-field quarterback of what he can do physically uh, from his throws to being pulled out of the game. Uh, to then me almost getting fired and him going back into the game uh, to uh, uh, <laughs> to going back in and leading us down the field to, to win. And I say that because I was a part of uh, uh, trying to get the other guys in there just to kind of get in and get, and get out. But Patrick came back in, led us down the field, and saved my job. And, and so, uh, but till now with where he's at, um, it is different. And that's because of all the experience that he has. And um, he sees the field so well for, for, you know, now being in his fifth year. He sees defenses so well. And so when he communicates on the sideline to us as coaches, um, the game is slow to him. At that point in time as a rookie, the game was probably fast. And so the communication was different. But right now he's on a different level. And it, it do, every game so far that we played, the second that the game ends, he, he celebrates for about two minutes. And then the first thing he says to us, meaning the little quarterback group and, and myself and, and Coach Girardi is, uh, it's time for Buffalo. Or it's time, whoever that next opponent is, it's time for them now. That's next. And so it's like he's wired that way. 
and he's 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 on a mission right now in a good way, and it's it's one week at a time, and that's what I think is really good about what, where he's at. And that actually, that along those lines, I think we saw he said like he's calling out cover zero pre-snap, he's calling out protections. Like, I don't know, but just tell me pre-snap. Where, where is he at? What are you seeing from him? Well, I think you probably saw the one play where he's taking the snap and he's pointing to the guy on the left as he's dropping back. Sometimes you don't make the, the, the right call, whether it's the center, the quarterback, the coach, whoever it is, and they're going to get you. There's, there's good schemes out there. And, and when you know that as a quarterback, as the ball's coming back to you, that you're going to be hot or that you're not going to have somebody sliding to that guy, that's where he's at. And, and, but that doesn't just come because... Um, He's, he's always been that way. He's worked hard to get to this point. And I think going back to the original question, back to his rookie year when he was learning how to do the cadence, he learning how to understand how our protections work. To right now, I mean, you know, it, it's it's hard to trick him uh, with coverages. It's hard to trick him with, with protections and blitzes and that sort of thing. But that said, he's obsessed with being great to make sure that no one can get him. Now, there's going to be times. Um, and when they do get you with a blitz or they do get you with a coverage, if it's a blitz, you got to know where to go with your hot throws. If, if it's a coverage, you got to respect the football and you can't, you can't make a quote unquote bad play worse. I think that's the other thing here that he's doing is his decision making right now is, is uh, he's protecting the football. He's making great plays with his legs. He's extending plays, which he's always done, but respect and protect the football. And it's at an elite level right now. To that point, it feels like his, his best throws may be when he's flushed around the run. Usually that's opposite. Do you have any rhyme or reason? From no, that's team? always been him from the whole way back to Texas Tech. I mean, you were, he, was, he was doing that there. So defensive coordinators, you know, I know because I was a part of it and heard him talk that they do get scared, scared to death when he's outside of the pocket because he just makes so many plays happen. And he's, he's comfortable being outside the pocket. Inside the pocket is where he's, he's growing and he's doing great with his feet, his timing getting his timing down with the, with the routes and concepts of these new receivers. Uh, that I love, too. We work on that every day. And there's some games this year that he's had where he's been really good with ball security, pushing up, pushing out. But his eyes are staying second, third level. They're not going to the D-line. And that's not easy to do. So there's little parts of this game that he's really doing great with. But again, the beauty of Patrick Mahomes is that he always wants to get better every single day. There's never He does not take a day off. And that's what I love most about him. Is it, is, it, is, is it better coach to, to coach him backwards versus conventionally? Like you're actually trying to coach him in the pocket more so than like all the rules, all the things that you're supposed to do when you're out yeah, of the pocket. Yeah, well, he does so much um, naturally that I think, yes, to that point, when, when you're able to coach off of your, your feet, wh 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 whether it's a hitch, whether it's a slide right, throw right, slide left, throw left, whatever it is, um, it's it definitely makes it easier for a coach and um he's he's just he cares about footwork he cares about timing he cares also about extending plays with his legs because he's good at it so coach reed does a phenomenal job at teaching all of us and him of how we want to uh balance that and make it exactly how we can get it so we can score as many points as possible as a former quarterback and a quarterback coach. Yeah. Now, where are we at with roughing the passer in this league? Is it a good spot, bad spot? <laughs> well, I just, again, um, uh, I'll follow up with what Coach said. Uh, again, you know, it, it's for, for all of us, I think we want to be able to, whatever it is, just get it right. And it is not easy for these referees and these umpires to be able to see things. But um, whatever the rules are, that's what we go by. And uh, at the same point in time, um, you know, we... Uh, we understand how, how some of the players feel, too. So. Coach, the, there was a combination of kind of post-game and Monday between Patrick and Travis and Andy. There was a conversation about Pat maybe kind of telling the offensive line, hey, if you, you can step it up, we can get it done. We, we like what we see going on downfield, but if you can step it up. And Andy's phrase was, his closet's clean, so he can do that. <laughs> what, what, is, what does a clean closet look like in, in the real well, world? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I don't know. I, I'd have to I'd have to ask Coach on that. But I do know this, being a former quarterback and being around Pat and, and the O-linemen and all the protection meetings that we have with those guys is, number one, he has so much respect for them and knows that if he doesn't have an offensive line, his job gets very, very hard. And, and vice versa. They know that if they give them time, their job gets easier because we're, we're putting up points and making good plays. And so uh, you have to have that in this league. And the, the great teams that have – 
you know, unified O-lines and quarterbacks and they understand and speak the same language, it's hard to stop. And those guys have worked so hard to, to be great there in the, in the pocket for Pat and then in the run game. And there's a lot of communication that goes on. And, um, you know, they, those guys get together on their own and do things. And when you have that, it's really, really good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Thank take you. care. See you.